Today we are going to be talking about Google Sites. What is Google Sites you ask? Google Sites is a free way to make a website. It is great for teachers and it is great for students to easily make their own site online for free. Very easy. So why use Google Sites? There are a number of reasons to use Google Sites. First, Google Sites is free. It also has a very easy to use and simple student-friendly interface. A site could be created for a class within only a couple of minutes using templates for different pages without the need for any advanced technology knowledge. So do you need to know anything about Google Sites or how to code? Nothing at all. It can improve student digital literacy skills and can open up your classroom and make it a truly collaborative learning environment. So what are some of the different ways that teachers can use Google Sites in the classroom? S teachers can create a web page for the class, which includes course materials and rich content, including videos, images, slides, and audio recordings. Teachers can use it for posting homework assignments and class events. You could also use it as a discussion board where every student has a say. You can create a page for posting announcements, class events, reading materials, classroom rules, and more. You can use it as a wiki and let students collaboratively work on their assignments and editing, editing content. You could use the filing cabinet page to upload documents, PDFs, and other materials to share with your students. You can create a private page where, sh where to share information with parents, like curriculum resources. You can even embed a calendar to keep track of your deadlines or a Google spreadsheet to keep track of your research. You can have students create web pages, more than just wikis, to, for projects or for portfolios at the end of the year or at the end of their high school careers. No matter what you decide to do with your website, you need to make sure to organize it properly and remember to update your site because content is king. When you're deciding what to put on your website, you want to make sure to think about your target audience. Is this going to be for parents? Is this going to be for students? Is this a collection of resources for other teachers to use? Once you figure out who this website is going to be for, then you can decide what you want on your website. Um, who is going to be accessing the site and for what reason? Are you going to be asking students to go to the site? Will parents go to the site? And very importantly in the K-12 classroom, can the information be public? Luckily, if your school subscribes to Google Apps for Education, all the information that's on Google Apps will, is actually property of the district. And also, if you use Google Apps for Education, you can make the website public to only people who are in your district. Now that you know what you're going to put on your website, you also want to think about how it's going to be laid out. Are there any websites with designs that you like? Check some websites for other classrooms, other students, or other schools that you may want to take ideas from. What about these websites would you like to incorporate in your websites? What type of things did you see that you liked and what did you not like? And then when you're finished with your website, you need to think about, is it easy to navigate? Did everything, all the information that you need or the students need or the parents need, is it all somewhere that's easy to access? How many clicks does it take to get from one section to another? Is it readable? Is it overly bright and 
and draws your attention to certain places. All of these things you need to think about. Now that you have a little bit of background on creating a Google site and what to put in your Google site and reasons to make it, it's time to get down to the dirty business. You could just watch this for today and then next time in class you're going to follow along and create your own Google site. So I went to google.com and then I'm going to click on sign in on the top right corner. It's going to ask you for your Google account information. Again, I highly recommend that you use your Google Apps for Education account, which is typically your educational email address and then a password that might be different than what you use to sign in. My Google Apps for Education domain includes the apps, the app drawer up on the top, and it has sites right above it. Depending on your administrator, they may have changed this change this, in which case you can go to sites.google.com. I have clearly made a couple different sites here, and so I'm going to go to create and make another site called ETAP628, and as you see here it says select a template, or so you can either come up with a blank template, with I, which I like to use, when learning how to use something and then eventually once I figure out all the ins and outs I'm gonna browse the gallery for more options. So I'm gonna name my site ETAP628. You do want to be careful to make a a site name that um, that is easy to remember and fairly generic because once you put it in there once you have your domain here you, you won't be able to change it. I'm going to select my theme, which I'm actually going to keep as the default, which is ski. And I'm going to just double check what's in more options here. Site categories and site description is not something I need to enter in for this test site, but if you're making a site for your classroom, you would put your category or your site description in here, as it'll be easier for other teachers and students to find sites in your Google Apps for Education domain. So I'm going to go ahead and click Create up on the top part of this page. And as you can see, it says Creating Your Site. Dun, da, da, da. And here it is. I have my very own website. It's still private right now. I haven't shared it with anybody. But if I click on this little Edit button, I'll be able to change the text and the title and change and add and remove elements on here which we are going to do on a different day so right now we have gone over the ins and outs and the basics of Google Sites and you have seen the basics of how to create a website tomorrow or next time in class you're going to brainstorm ideas that you want on your website and then you're going to create your very own home on the web